Happy Monday to everybody out there. First day of the week. Hope y'all getting y'all week off to a good start. I hope y'all starting it with your boy at the powerhouse, the risky powerhouse. It's another episode. We had an interesting weekend of basketball this weekend. Uh, we up to 1,292 subscribers. You guys been showing a lot of love. Dropped two videos over the course of the weekend. One with my boy Elijah, who was the Jersey Raffle winner. He from Brooklyn. Brooklyn stand up. Had my boy Glenn from Mount Vernon, New York. Money earning. He put me on to some game from the New York Knicks. You know what I mean? So we talked a lot of Brooklyn Nets. We talked a lot of New York Knicks. So you guys should go check that video out for sure. And uh, so, yeah, like I said, we had a lot of interesting things going on over the course of the weekend. A lot of interesting basketball. I was tuned in all weekend. Your boy DeRozan hit two game winners. Do hit two game winners in back-to-back -back games. And what make it even more impressive from DeRozan is the fact that he had two game winners from three. And we all know DeRozan, you know, he's a mid-range dead eye, but DeRozan really not looking to shoot a lot of threes. He's been taking 2.2 threes um, this season total, which is the third most in his career. So he usually is about one to two threes per game, which isn't a lot of volume in this era of basketball, to be quite frank. Uh, DeRozan, however... Dude just been leading the Chicago team. Right now they're sitting in the number one seed um, thanks to Brooklyn losing to the Clippers. But, hey, Chicago, they got that number one seed right now. DeRozan leading those boys. Levine still flourishing as a young wing. Uh, you got Lonzo defending. Lonzo been out. Kobe White been stepping up. He's showing why he's still been a lottery pick. Hopefully he can be an asset to where if Chicago can't start him because of Lonzo Ball, they can move him to a team where he could potentially start, maybe be, have like a Terry Rozier type of trajectory where he can go to another team, start, you know, average close to 20 points and be impactful. But, yeah, on this tip for today, um, the Chicago Bulls been playing well. DeRozan, he uh, had a uh, – if I'm not mistaken, he got hit with the COVID protocol. He was out for three games. The Bulls went one and two in those three. And since DeRozan been back, seven games back, DeRozan averaging 28.4 points, 4.4 rebounds, 6.3 assists, shooting 48.6% from the field and 71.4% from three. On one attempt a game, <laughs> dude taking one three. And just think about that. He got two three-point game winners. Check this out, yo. It's New Year's Eve. He dribbling up. Close game. Come on. Look at the one-legged. That's so Kobe-esque. Take it to the very next day. New Year's Day. Look at him in the corner. He's trapped. Pump fake. Kobe. Now tell me DeMar DeRozan not balling out there. Dude really looking like Kobe. He grew up in Compton. I'm not saying he's Kobe. But right now, 28 points per game over the last seven. Two three-point game winners. One one-legged one game winner. One off of a pump fake. Come on, we got to give DeMar his respect, dude, out there balling. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, we had a lot of basketball over the course of the weekend. Um, outside of DeRozan uh, pulling Chicago through two big wins, one over Indiana and then over Washington, um, Giannis on New Year's Eve, on New Year's Day, excuse me, triple-double. Dude, 35 points, 16 rebounds, 10 assists, a couple of steals, and he, he did that. And, and, and it seemed like when Giannis get his triple-doubles, this would make it funny about Giannis. It seemed like he barely played. Like, so a lot of superstars play, you know, 36, 37, 38 minutes, whatever. Giannis be playing like 32, 33 minutes. Dude played what? Come on. Let's get it. He played 32 minutes, shot 12 for 18. He got 12 free throw attempts in that 32 minutes. He went 9 for 12. He had 35 points, 16 rebounds, 10 assists, and 2 steals. Shout out to Giannis. Uh, you know, he had nice support from Drew Holiday, 21 points and six assists. Um, Bobby Portis, 14 points. Uh, Grayson Allen stepping in for Chris Middleton, 16 points. It's good to see Grayson getting the opportunity being traded from Memphis. He came into Milwaukee. Most of us were thinking he was going to come off the bench with a lot of injuries, with COVID protocol and a lot of things going in his favor for him to get minutes. Um, he's really showing up in those minutes, and he's showing that he's going to get another contract after he leaves Milwaukee. So, Grayson Allen, 
you you keeping yourself in the league, my boy, shooting at three and defending and just being, you know, competitive. That's what it's all about. Just come out there. Don't let people walk over you and you will be able to show why you deserve to be in the league. Uh, fast forward to your boy, KD. Harden, they went up against the Clippers. No Paul George, no Kawhi Leonard. And Eric Bledsoe turned by the clock. Eric Bledsoe looked like he was out there playing for a contract. <laughs> Your boy Reggie Jackson, you know, he haven't been shooting the best for the Clippers this year. But somehow, some way, it seemed like their defensive schemes, um, you know, Zubats, Marcus Morris, who actually didn't play against Brooklyn, but just to name a few pieces, Luke Kennard, um, Terrence Mann, all of these dudes have come together and they're gelling, they're gluing together, they're playing well. Uh, somehow, some way, they're in the five seed in the West. So they haven't played with Kawhi at all. They've been missing Paul George for a couple of games and they still balling. So you got to give these dudes some shout, some some love because Ty Lu, he coaching up a job, coaching up a storm over there. He got a defensive scheme going. Obviously, he controlling the pace to where you know they they don't have to be a super fiery offense like they once was a couple of years ago under Doc Rivers. So let's see if the uh, Clippers can keep it up. Maybe Kawhi comes back. Maybe Paul George comes back a little early. You never know. I don't think Kawhi is coming back personally. I think with an injury, anything ACL, Achilles related, you take that whole 12 months, make sure you're good, get a training camp, get a preseason, and start the season with the rest of the uh, league so that you don't be behind trying to catch up and all of that stuff. So Kawhi Leonard, if my my advice, don't play at all, brother. Don't play at all. Uh, let's get on to the Denver Nuggets. Your boy Nikola Jokic. They played against. They went up against the uh, number two overall pick, Jalen Green, in the Houston Rockets. Jalen Green showed why he was the number two overall pick. Twenty nine points. I like to see him get more assists, more rebounds. Uh, not really big on the rebounds, but I'm big on the assists just because of the fact that if you're going to have the ball that much, if you're going to be scoring, you got to facilitate for the other players around you when that double team start coming so that swing, swing, swing can be there. So I like to see him get more into facilitating for his big, actually using the pick and roll to get – to manipulate five people instead of just trying to get a bucket. But right now, the young buck, he just out there, he playing free, playing young. He's 19, 20 years old, so I don't blame him. Go out there and get buckets, young fella. Uh, your boy, uh, Nikola Jokic, the MVP of the league, 24 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists. And he did that in 25 minutes. Dude shot 8 for 12 from the field. That's 67%. Do y'all realize that Nikola Jokic is shooting 59% on the season? The dude is nuclear. 26 points, 14 and a half rebounds, over seven assists, and he is hitting from everywhere, mid-range, post, offensive rebounds, putbacks, threes, everything. And then he got a little mini point guard named Capazzo, and this dude is getting busy out there. Check this out. Look at him. Snatch, come here, behind the back. Look how smooth the behind the back was. Yeah, you know what Capazzo out there doing. He getting loose. He see what the space that he's getting because Jokic is drawing so much and he's actually playing free. Good to see Capazzo out there um, playing aggressive because I picked him up on my fantasy league. A lot of people out with COVID, so you know, gotta steal them. Uh, gotta steal them people that's out there. People, you know, a lot of people that they be casual fans. They don't be locked in, but me, we locked in because in the powerhouse, we gotta have this up here for y'all. So yeah. Like I said, that boy Capazzo, keep playing free. 22 points, 12 assists. I will take that for a New Year's Day game. It was good to see Ball Ball get some minutes off the bench. He played 20 minutes, had an opportunity to get 11 points, one assist, three rebounds. Just get some ch a chance to just play. You know, just get a chance to play. He shot, uh, what, one for three it's from three. So it's just good to see him get an opportunity to play, like I said, because the Denver Nuggets, they really – they really been kind of keeping them on that bench. So, yeah, shouts out to them. Uh, Golden State, they had a big game against the Utah Jazz on New Year's Day. The Golden State Warriors prevailed. And it was simply because Donovan Mitchell shot the Utah Jazz out of the game. It was one point in time where Donovan was one for ten. Now, I do, I do understand that when you score at a high volume often that it just – it's, it's going to be some nights where you don't score, you know, to the highest degree that you want to. However, with that being said, Donovan, if you're not going, you got to get look for the guys that are. When you have the ball in your hands a lot, you have to be able to create for the other players that's capable. Rudy Gobert had 20 points, 19 rebounds. 
is no reason why he only took 10 shots. He shot 9 for 10. You got to get him going. You got to understand that Rudy is getting paid $41 million. Rudy is a defensive player of the year. And anything you can do as a teammate to uplift Rudy, any way offensively, Donovan, you have to find ways to get Rudy the ball more because he is the best player on the Utah Jazz. Rudy Gobert is the most effective player on the Jazz. 15 points, 15 rebounds, three blocks a game nearly. The dude is the best defensive big in the league, alters the most shots in the league. He controls the entire defense of the Utah Jazz. So he is no reason why he shouldn't be incorporated offensively. Do he have a post game like Hakeem Olajuwon? No. But do he have finishing ability? Yes. He is a 71% finisher on 7.5 attempts per game. Rudy Gobert should easily take 12 shots a game. And even if he's not shooting 71%, I'll take 67% on 12 attempts because he would be a 22.15 big, averaging two and a half blocks. But yeah, that's my feelings on the Utah Jazz right now, man. I don't think they can prevail in the playoffs until they figure out that uh, Rudy Gobert is not a liability. Last year, a lot of people, you know, they tried to scapegoat Rudy Gobert, but I, I blame Quinn Snyder, the coach, because they went up by 23 versus the LA Clippers with Gobert on the floor. So losing the lead with Gobert on the floor, they was just as much to blame other um, the other personnel just as much as Gobert because they couldn't guard anybody on the perimeter. But, yeah, that's neither here nor there. I hope the Utah Jazz make the right decision in terms of getting Gobert involved more. Van Vliet, big game in the East. Um, uh, Sunday, early Sunday against the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks still losing games. They lose to the Toronto Raptors. Scotty Barnes, rookie, have a night, a decent game on his return back from the COVID protocols. Uh, Julius Randle was out. However, Obi Toppin got a, a a decent start, so it's good. It's interesting to see if um if the New York Knicks can figure out a way to string together some wins, get back in the playoff hunt. I think they was in a nine seed before losing this game. I'm not sure where they are now. I'm sure they're still hovering around to play in. So they still have opportunity to make a run down the stretch. Uh, it's interesting to see if they can lock in on defense, get back to the Tibbs way of playing, if Tibbs can find his rotation that, you know, string together some wins. And if they can't, they just won't make the playoffs. And this is just as simple as that. Uh, Jalen Brown, 50 points in overtime. Big win. Big win for the uh, the Boston Celtics. I know it was against the Orlando Magic. But anytime Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum have an efficient 50 points, it's something to talk about. Jalen Brown, 19 for 28 from the field or 19 for 29 from the field. Come on, you can't get more efficient than that. Dude was out there raining buckets. 19 field goals. Shouts out to Jalen Brown on the big game. He been having hamstring issues in and out of the lineup. A lot of inconsistencies in the lineup over there in Boston because of the COVID protocol, because of injuries and this, that, and the third. However, Jalen Brown, 50 points. Shouts out to you, playboy. Uh, Luka Doncic is back. First game back. He was pretty slow, um, but he got a win. Got a win. So, shout out to Luka Doncic. They played the Oklahoma City Thunder. So, it was a free game, you know, just to get back in rhythm. No poor Zingas. He had the ball in his hands a lot. Um, but Luka, you know, 14 points, 10 rebounds, uh, 9 assists. Um, he had 7 turnovers, though. So, I don't ever want to see 7 turnovers from any ball handler because, you know, giving the other team possessions, giving the other team more opportunities than your team in the NBA, usually lose, usually leads to losses because uh, it's, it, other offenses are just too good for you to give them more opportunities than you. If I take 100 shots and you take 85 shots, it's a better better chance that I can hit 45 field goals over you. So, you know, you, you got to take care of that ball throughout the course of the game because that's what winning basketball truly is, taking care of the ball, executing the offense, and getting the shot up every time. Um, yeah, so when you switch over uh, to the boy Josh Giddy on Oklahoma City Thunderside, he became the youngest player to put together a, a stat sheet with 17 points, 13 rebounds, and 14 assists. Uh, Josh Giddy, man, shouts out to you, 6'8", 210 pounds or so, lengthy, young, energetic, got a motor on them. You got to look for it. You got to look for those players with a motor. You know, it's hard to gauge players in OKC right now just because it's kind of hard to gauge impact because of the way they play so young, you know, losing a lot of games. 
things of that nature. But you got to come out there and bring energy. And one thing you can read is energy and, and good decision making. Josh Giddy, he's just a prime testament of that. You know, getting four steals on defense, you know, not just picking pockets, also reading passing lanes, you know, just being using his length at 6'8 as a ball handler to be able to make plays for his teammates, only had three turnovers. So you forced four turnovers. You only had three turnovers, and you had 14 assists. Shouts out to Josh Giddy, young boy, balling. Speaking of assists to turnover ratio, CP3, the man went out there against the Charlotte Hornets and took six shots. I think he had seven points, but he had 16 assists, and he was a plus 33 on the floor. CP3 diced up the Charlotte Hornets on Sunday night, man. Dude had one turnover on 16 assists. Devin Booker gave him 24 points as the lead score. They had six double-figure scores on the uh, Phoenix Suns, so CP3 was basically diming everybody up, dicing everything up, and the Charlotte Hornets couldn't defend the thing. Um, and it's just sad to see from the Charlotte Hornets. You know, I got big expectations for the Hornets. I'm a big LaMelo Ball fan. They have Gordon Hayward, the vet. Uh, they got a lot of young pieces. Miles Bridges coming into his own. Terry Rozier back ingratiated into the rotation. P.J. Washington off the bench. Uh, uh, Vernon Carey Jr., the backup big man, young big man. Uh, the, the Martin twin, and so forth and so on. So it's Smith, backup point guard. They got a lot of pieces. They got a lot of pieces. I want to see these boys in the playoffs. And losing the game, I know the Phoenix Suns the best team in the league, but you got to show some competitiveness. You can't get blown out from the first quarter throughout the course of the game. They lost from the from the opening tip to the end of the game. They was down. So, hope I can see this uh, Charlotte Hornets bounce back. I'm not sure who the next game is on their roster, but I'm gonna be on the look on. I'm gonna be on the lookout for that just because of the simple fact that I want to see them win and I want to see them respond. Uh, Jalen Smith. Shouts out to the 757. I'm from Norfolk, Virginia, if y'all don't know. Made in Norfolk. I wore this shirt right here exclusively for my boy Jalen Smith. He uh filled in for DeAndre Ayton, who was out for the Phoenix Suns. Jalen gave him 19 points, 12 rebounds. He filled in, in in the paint, doing the dirty work for the Phoenix Suns. I'm proud to see somebody from the 757 in the league flourishing. Shouts out to Cam Thomas over in Brooklyn. I would like to see Cam Thomas get some consistent minutes. Uh, but with Kyrie coming back, that's probably going to be on the downswing in terms of his minutes. But, yeah, shout out to Jalen Smith from the 757. Shout out to Cam Thomas from the 757. Switch over to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They got another win. Uh, they've been balling. They beat the Indiana Pacers. It's like the Pacers just cannot get a win. The Pacers actually played well in this game against Cleveland, but it just seemed like Cleveland – Willed them out, uh, controlled the tempo of the game, played defensively. Uh, Jared Allen had a steal in two blocks, double-double uh, points and rebounds. Evan Mobley, 24 points, nine rebounds, four assists. Um, the great game from the young fella. I think he's making his push back into the, MV, uh, the rookie of the year um, front runner between him and Scotty Barnes. So it's interesting to see who's going to get that. Heading into the All-Star break, uh, Kevin Love coming off the bench. It's good to see Kevin Love revitalizing his career. He got another 20-point game. That's 20 points and eight rebounds off the bench. Kevin Love, you know, the last three years, he's been making a lot of money and doing a little bit of production. Been hurt here and there. Some of his injuries, he's sat out for the whole season, and it just seemed like we never seen Kevin Love since LeBron left Cleveland, really. And that's the 2018 season. So it's good to see Kevin Love actually assisting these young bucks, being a good vet and, and helping them get wins because they need his production. They need his veteran leadership, his championship caliber. He the longest lasting Cleveland Cavalier uh, player in terms of the roster. So he's the only person who embodies the championship season right now on the Cleveland Cavaliers roster. So I hope Kevin Love continues this throughout the course of the season coming off the bench for the Cleveland Cavaliers. They got a lot of power for us, a lot of centers. And they actually won this game against the Indiana Pacers without Ricky Rubio and without Darius Garland. So that's just a testament to how effective these bigs are. Lowry Marketing, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, Dean Wade, Kevin Love, and so forth and so on. They got a lot of power force and centers. And it's just so interesting to see J.B. Bickerstaff string together wins. And he really had to be in consideration for Coach of the Year. I tweeted earlier on the Risky Powerhouse Twitter. Y'all should go check it out if you haven't. Um, I tweeted earlier that J.B. Bickerstaff, what he's doing with these bigs, is something that we haven't seen in this era in terms of having three, four bigs on the court at a time. 
with one guard, maybe two guards, and actually just using that guard to facilitate for the bigs, facilitating through the post, actually having using the bigs' athleticism to run the floor and create for themselves is a special thing to watch right now because, you know, it just brings a different twist. It brings a different style. It's getting back to basketball where every team didn't play the same. When you watch the Cleveland Cavaliers, they don't play the same way everybody else plays, and that's why they're a joy to watch this season. Interested to see where they can go for it. Um, moving forward, it's 3.30 a.m. Monday morning, January 3rd. We got a lot of interesting basketball later on this evening. And this is your chance to uh, leave a like if you have not. Uh, if you've made it to this point of the video, drop a comment on future video ideas that you have. Uh, maybe it's your favorite player. Maybe it's your favorite team. You know, it's the team that I haven't shouted out enough. If you're a Bulls fan, Hornets fan, Knicks fan, Brooklyn fan, just holler at me, man, on Twitter. Holler at me on Instagram. I'm open to conversation. I'm open to everything, DMs, everything. So just keep it flooding. Keep it coming in. I'm trying my best to get back in contact with everybody. Um, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Hit that noty bell so you can be notified every time I drop content because it's coming consistent every day, every other day. So videos coming, man. I love y'all. It's the Risky Powerhouse. We are out. and Y'all will see me later.